Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the pet rainbow GUI. Now, as always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn the post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new episode. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go check that out. With that being said, let's get right into it. So, hopping directly into Studio, let's get started on the GUI. Going into our starter GUI, we are going to go ahead and add a brand new screen GUI to this. We'll then rename this to pet rainbow and we're also going to set reset on spawn to false now that we've done that let's go ahead and add a frame inside of here and we are going to want to center this frame so anchor point 0.5 as well as the position there we go now it's centered on our screen of course for the size we're going to want to make this scaled so let's go ahead and make sure that we do that now that we've done that i want this to be a little bit taller than the buttons on the left as well as on the bottom of it as well so something like that then we want this to be a little bit longer than our clicker buttons on the bottom as well and i think something like that looks pretty good let's go ahead and recenter it real quick boom there we go now to make the sizing a little bit more precise i'm gonna go with 0.33 as well as 0.5 cool so i like the look of that now what we're gonna do is set the background color of this which is gonna be a little bit of a lighter blue let's then go ahead and throw a ui corner inside of here we'll start off with 0.1 and that is way too rounded so maybe 0.05 and i think i'm gonna go with 0 0.025 and that looks pretty good to me we'll then throw a ui stroke inside of here as well for the color of this we are gonna grab this blue right here and then we're gonna drag the slider down a little bit to make the color darker and then i'm gonna increase the thickness a little bit and I think I'm gonna go with something like 3.5 awesome now that we've done that this frame is looking pretty good what we'll then do is add a text label inside of here and we're gonna rename this to title now for the text of this we are gonna say rainbow pets with an exclamation mark then we're gonna make the text white we're gonna set the text to scaled as well for the background transparency we're gonna set that to one for the font we're of course gonna go with a Gotham bold now for the size of this let's make sure that we set that to scale now for positioning this we're actually gonna want to center this horizontally so let's go to our position and for the anchor point we're gonna say 0.5 for the X and 0.5 on the position as well. Now we also want this to be a little bit from the top. Currently it's 0 0.029, but I just like to be a little bit more precise. So we're going to say 0 0.025. Now for the sizing of this on the X, I'm going to set that to 0.5 and on the Y, we're going to do 0 0.125. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. Next, what we'll do is add a text button inside of here. We're going to rename this to exit. Of course, for the background color, we're going to go with a red. For the text, we're going to set that to blank. Now, of course, for the size of this, we want to make it scaled and we want this to appear at the top right corner of the GY. Now I think this is a little bit too wide so we're going to make that a little bit skinnier for the size just to be precise i think we're just going to set this to 0 0.06 on the x and now that's looking pretty good now that we've repositioned that towards the top right corner the next thing that we're going to do is set the border size pixel to zero and then we're going to duplicate the ui corner from this frame and drag that inside of the exit button we'll increase the corner radius as well so maybe 0.1 next what we'll do is duplicate the title text label and drag that inside of exit now for the text of this we're going to set that to an x and we want to make the size a lot larger so we can start off with something like 0.8 and then we want to center that inside of the button as well so 0.5 on the position and the anchor point and i think that looks good if you want to make any adjustments to the exit button you certainly can we'll then duplicate that exit button and we'll rename this to buy slots now for the background color of this we actually want to make it a green with this one we actually want this to appear on the left hand side of the screen so we're going to drag that over to here now we're also going to want to resize this a little bit so i'm going to drag this out a little bit and then i'm also going to shrink it a tiny bit as well now we're going to set the corner radius of the ui corner to something like 0.3 because we want this button to be quite round then what we're going to do is insert a UI stroke inside of here. And once again, we are going to take the color of the bun and then just drag the slider down slightly. Now we're not actually able to see the stroke around it right now. And that's because our apply stroke mode is set to contextual. And since this is a text button, the stroke would be applied to the text inside of the text button. Since we don't have any text, we don't actually see the stroke currently. But if we set the apply stroke mode to border, then the stroke will appear as a border around the button. And then I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. So we're going to set that to two. Next, what we'll do is I will actually set the title text label and we're going to say plus two space slot. Now, the reason that this is moved over to the side of the screen is because when I was dragging this button around, this text label was directly on top of the bun. So it's kind of hard to touch the bun without touching that label. And that's why the text label was dragged all the way to the side of the screen. Now, for how I want to position this bun, I actually want to center it with the Rainbow Pets text label. And then I want to move it towards the left of the screen. So something like that. Now, with this text label right here, that's dragged off the side of the screen. We're then going to center this back on the bun. So for the position, let's go ahead and update that. Now that is centered inside of the bun and that's looking good. Next, what we're going to do is add another frame inside of here and we're going to rename this to bg which is short for background what we want to do is we want to set the background color of this to the blue color of our normal frame 
and then we're going to just make this a little bit darker. Cool. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and resize it to make sure that it is scale. And then we can actually resize this as well. So let's go ahead and drag it out a little bit. Now you basically want this to fill up most of the GUI. And then we want to make sure that we center this horizontally. So we're going to say 0.5 on the X for that and 0.5 on the X for that as well. And now that's centered horizontally. We'll then duplicate this UI corner and throw that inside of the BG frame. And I don't even think I'll adjust the corner radius because I think that looks fine. Now let's start off by basically creating the main menu. So we're going to duplicate our BG frame and then we're going to rename this to mode. Then we'll resize this a tiny bit. So we basically just want it to be slightly smaller than our background frame. Cool. So now I think that sizing is pretty good. Next, what I'm going to do is delete the UI corner from inside of the mode frame. And then I'm going to throw in a UI grid layout. Now inside of here, we'll then throw in another frame and we're going to rename this to make. Now going back to the UI grid layout on the cell size for the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.4. And then for the Y, we're going to set that to 975. The reason for that is because we're going to actually have two frames inside of here. So that's why we're making this cell size 0.4 because we want to be able to fit at least two inside of here. And then we also want them to be just a tiny bit smaller as well. And then for the Y, we also just want them to be a little bit smaller than the tallest they could possibly be. That's why we're setting it to 0.975. Now for the vertical and the horizontal alignment, we're actually going to set both of those to center. And for the cell padding on the X scale, I think I'm just going to set that to 0.1 and then also set everything else to zero. Cool. Now we're going to delete one of these make frames and then we're just going to start working on this one. Now the first thing that we're going to do is throw an image label inside of here and we're going to rename this to icon. Now for the actual image of this, we want to use the trade icon and then we're going to set the background transparency to one. And we should probably also set the background transparency of the make frame to one as well so that we could actually see the icon because it's white. I think instead of doing that, I'm just going to set this to a darker color so that we can still see how big the frame is and easily be able to resize all of the children. So for the size of this on the X scale, we're going to set that to one because we want it to be the entire width. And for the height, we want it to be a little bit smaller because we want to be able to fit a text button down below there. So we're going to say something like 0.725. Awesome. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the buy slots text button and drag that inside of this frame. We'll then rename this to button. And for the title text label inside of here, we are going to set the text of this to make. Now we're also going to want to resize the button as well. On the X scale, we're going to set that to one. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.15 so that we could fit this button in here along with the image label. Now for the actual position of this on the X, we're going to set that to zero. And on the Y, we're going to set that to 0.8. So it's directly below the image label. Next, what we're going to do is actually recolor the background color of this button. So we're going to go ahead and pick that light blue. And then for the UI stroke, we're going to go with the same UI stroke that we used before. So just like that. Now for the UI corner inside of here, I want to make the corners a lot less round. So we're going to try something like 0.1. And I think that looks pretty good. Then for the background transparency of the make frame, we're going to set that to one so that we can actually see how this looks. And then one final thing that we want to do is actually set the scale type property of the icon image label. And we're going to set that to fit. Awesome. So now that we've got that frame created, we're then going to go ahead and duplicate it. And we're going to rename the second one to view. Now inside of here, we're going to go ahead and update the image of the icon image label. And we're going to set that to the settings icon right there. Then for the bun, we're going to go inside of the title text label and set the text of this to say view. Cool. Now that we've made both of those, those are all good to go. The last thing that we actually want to do is set the background transparency of the mode frame to one so that we no longer see that black border surrounding it. Now that we've created that mode frame, what we can then do is actually set the visibility of it to false so that we can still easily see the background frame. Next, what we're going to do is throw a scrolling frame inside of our frame, and we're going to rename this to view container. Now, we definitely have some properties in here related specifically to the scrolling frame itself that we want to update. So for instance, we want to make this scrolling frame able to be scrolled horizontally instead of being scrolled vertically. In order for us to do that, we want to update the canvas size. And on the X, we're going to set this to 1.5 and then zero on all the other axes. Now, if we look at our scrolling frame, we can actually see that we're now scrolling horizontally going left to right. We can then go ahead and resize this. So I'm going to, of course, make sure that this is set to scale. And then for the actual size of this, we basically want to fit this inside of the background, just leaving a tiny bit of border on each of the sides. Now, I think that looks pretty good. What we'll then do is make sure that we center this horizontally. So 0.5 and 0.5. Let's then go ahead and set the background transparency to one. We also might as well set the border size pixel to zero so we can get rid of that ugly black line. Then for the scroll bar, let's go ahead and set the thickness of this to something like six. And then for the actual color of this, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. So sort of like a whitish gray. And now I think that looks pretty good. What we'll then do is throw a UI grid layout inside of here. And then we'll also throw a frame inside of here as well. Now we'll of course go ahead and rename this frame to template. Then for the UI grid layout, let's start adjusting this. So for the cell size, we are going to want to be able to fit a couple of templates inside of here, at least five. So what I'm going to do is set the cell size on the X scale to 0.15. And on the Y, we're just going to go once again with 0.975. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and duplicate the template and then we can start updating the cell padding. For the cell padding, I think I'm just going to go with 0.01 on the X scale so that there's just a small space in between the templates. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and delete the extra template. And now we'll start working on creating the actual template itself. So first we'll go ahead and update the background color and we're going to pick this blue outside of here. Then what we're going to do is throw a UI corner inside of here because we want to make the corners a little bit round. So I'm going to set the corner radius to 
one. I think that works pretty well. Then we're going to throw a UI stroke inside of here as well. We then want to set the color of this to white. And then we might want to make this a little bit larger, like maybe 1.5. It depends on how you like it. Next, what I'm going to do is throw a viewport frame inside of here. For the size of this, let's make sure that we set that to scale before we actually resize it with a mouse. Cool. So for the viewport frame, we pretty much want it to take up most of the top half of this frame. So we're going to do something like that. I think that looks pretty good. We might want to make it just slightly smaller, something like that. Then let's make sure that we center this horizontally. So 0.5 and 0.5 on the X scale. Next, we'll throw a text label inside here. So I'm going to duplicate the title text label and drag that inside of our template frame. We're going to rename this to ready. And for the text of this, we actually want this to say will be ready in dot, dot, dot. Let's then go ahead and update the size of this. So horizontally, we basically want it to be the entire width of this and for the height we're going to set that to 0.1 so we're going to go with 0.9 and 0.1 and then we want to position this below the viewport frame so let's go with 0.5 and that works perfectly for us next what we'll do is duplicate this and rename this text label to time now for the position of this we're going to set that to 0.6 so that it's moved just below the other text label for the text of this we're going to set this to 1d comma 23h comma 59m so basically displaying one day 23 hours and 59 minutes we're also going to go ahead and update the text color and we want to set it to like a purplish pink color so something like that now we'll go ahead and duplicate this text label one more time and we're going to rename this to unlock now for the text of this we want to use an up arrow and then say unlock now and then another up arrow now for the position of this we're going to go with about 0.9 and then we also want to make this slightly smaller as well so we're going to say 0 0.085 instead of 0.1 now for the color of this we actually want to go with a nice green so we're going to take the green from that button right up there we then also want to actually give a stroke to this so for the stroke transparency we're going to say about 0.6 seven. Cool. So now that text label is looking good. The last thing that we want to do is throw a text button inside of here. So what I'm going to actually do is duplicate the buy slash text button, drag that inside of here, and we're going to rename this to buy. Now for resizing this, we're of course going to go with 0.9 on the X scale and about 0.125 on the Y scale. We'll then position this below the time text label. So for the position on the Y axis, we're going to go with 0.725. And now that looks pretty decent. And then we also want to center this horizontally. So 0.5 and 0.5. We'll then actually set the text of the title text label on this button to say 799 our money symbol. Cool. So now that's all looking pretty well. What we'll then do is set the background transparency of the viewport frame to one. Now going back to the UI grid layout on the vertical alignment, we actually want to set this to center and then go into the view container itself for the horizontal scroll bar inset. We want to set this to always. And now that makes the template look like it's not kind of touching the scroll bar anymore. Additionally, if you're bothered by the stroke not appearing on the left side of the screen, what you can do is add a padding. What you could do is add a UI padding to the view container and then set the scale of the padding left to something like 0 0.001. And now we can see that the template's been moved over a bit so that we can see the stroke surrounding it on all sides. So if we duplicate the template a couple of times, we can see how it looks and it looks pretty good. We'll then delete all the other templates, just leaving one. And then we're gonna set the visibility of this to false. Along with that, we can set the visibility of the view container to false as well. Next, we'll create the make container, which actually displays all the golden pets that the player currently has inside of their inventory that they could use to make rainbow. Now, oddly enough, this container is pretty identical to the one that we have for our pet bank. So we're going to go ahead and actually take the container from the pet bank and insert that in here. So inside of our starter GUI, we have the pet bank screen GUI right here. Inside of that frame, we have a container right here. And all we're going to do is copy this, and then we're going to paste it into the pet rainbow frame by hitting control shift V. Awesome. So now that we've done this, let's just resize it slightly now with this frame we actually want to give a little bit of room on the bottom so that's why i'm going to make this container take up about 75 or maybe 70 percent of this then what we're going to do is make sure that we set this to visible so that we can actually see it additionally we're going to rename this to make container and then inside of here we can also set the template to visible as well so that we can actually see that now realistically we don't actually have to make any changes to the make container because this is pretty much everything that we really need like i said for the size of this though we're leaving like the bottom 20 percent of the back background frame still available because we're going to display some text down here as well as a text button. So what we're going to do is add a frame inside of this frame and we're going to rename this to bottom. Now we of course want to make the size scale. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've done that, we are then going to actually resize this to be the bottom 20% that we were talking about and leaving open for something down here. Now to make this a little bit easier on ourselves, let's go ahead and set the background transparency of the make frame to one so that we can see where that one ends. And then we can resize the bottom frame appropriately. So I think that's decent enough. Let's just go ahead and make sure that we have this centered horizontally. So 0.5 and 0.5. Next, what we'll do is set the background transparency of this frame to one so that we no longer see that. We can also do the same to the make container as well. So set that to one. Then we'll duplicate the title text label and bring that inside of bottom. And we're going to rename this text label to info. For the text of this, we want to say select golden 
pets to convert to rainbow. The more pets added, comma, the less wait time exclamation mark now for the size of this we want to be able to fit three different objects inside of this frame so we're going to go with about 325 on the x and simply one on the y scale now that we've done that let's go ahead and throw in a ui list layout which will easily handle lining up all of these different elements now going back to the text label we actually want to set the text x alignment to left because we want that text to appear more towards the left what we'll then do is duplicate the buy slots button and bring that inside of here we'll then rename this button to convert and then for the size of this we're going to go with 0.3 on the x scale and about 0.6 on the y scale now for the ui list layout we actually want to set the fill direction to horizontal and then although it's going to look weird for right now i'm going to set the horizontal alignment to center as well as the vertical alignment awesome so now that we've done that we're going to duplicate the info text label and we're going to rename this to info 2 now for the text x alignment we actually want to change this one to right because it's of course opposite to the left one and then for the text of this we're going to say selecting multiple pets only reduces the time and still only makes one rainbow pet cool so now we're done with that text label and now let's start customizing the convert button what we're going to do is take this blue color right here and we're just going to make it rather dark and now that we've done that let's then go inside of here and grab the ui stroke and on the ui stroke we actually want to set the color of this to just be an even darker blue so something like that now for the text of the title text label we are going to say convert with an exclamation mark and now that button's looking pretty good i think i might just make this blue just a little bit lighter though so something like that and now i think that looks great now going to the ui list layout i think i'm going to add a tiny bit of padding here so i'm going to go with 0 0.02 just to give it a tiny bit of spacing between the bun and the text labels awesome so now that we've done that we can actually set the visibility of this frame to false and then go into the main container we can set the visibility of the template and the main container itself to false as well now we want to add one more text label to this so what we're going to do is duplicate the title text label and we're going to rename this to no q we'll then set the text of this to say you have no pets waiting in queue we're then going to want to make sure that we center this text label both horizontally and vertically so 0.5 and 0.5 and then we'll also resize this a little bit as well on the x we're going to probably set this to about 0.9 maybe 0.8 if you want to make it a little bit smaller and then i think on the y that might even be good like that you might want to go with maybe 0.15 it depends but i think that actually looks pretty good so now that we've created that we can then set the visibility of this to false awesome so now we've pretty much created the entire gui anyways ladies and gentlemen with that being said that's going to be it for this episode as always if you guys did enjoy it make sure you smash the like button also hit the subscribe button and turn the post notifications on so you get notified every time i upload a brand new episode i also have a patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that i made during this episode there's a link down below the description and you guys are going to check that out with that being said i'll see you guys in the next episode